Hello and welcome to the Rest is Football question and answer episode with Micah Richards, Alan Shearer and me, Gary Lineker. Uh, thanks once again uh, for sending in your questions. Um, they're much appreciated. Um, they're all coming in on the newsletter at present and um, we've got some um, beauties again uh, this week. Uh, we'll endeavour to answer as many as we possibly can. Uh, first question, Will McAvoy. I keep seeing Jolie and Lescott on more and more punditry and think he's really impressive. Micah, you played with him. What's he like as a bloke? And you must know what really happened with his pocket tweeting. <laughs> I, I assume he's talking about the incident um, a few years ago. Didn't he put out a tweet of a kind of flash motor car after you got hammered when you were at Aston Villa together? <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Oh my God! What I mean? Okay, let me let me uh, take you back all the way back. So, in the season, we're having a, a very tough time. We started with Tim Sherwood, it was at Aston Villa, and then we basically changed manager. We got Remy Gard, and the team wasn't good enough, and we was getting pretty much battered every week. When they was reading out the names on the tonai before the game, like it would go number one, Brad Guzon, boo. Jolie and Lescott, boo. Michael Richards, but there's booing all the players. So we're going out onto the pitch and we're thinking, oh my God, we're playing at home, but it's like we're playing away. It was incredible. <laughs> oh and some of it was justified. I'm not going to lie because we were tedious that season. So we play Liverpool. And we get absolutely spanked. Six nil. Oh, six I nil. I think I was at fault for about three of those goals. <laughs> well, at least you weren't the one doing the tweet. <laughs> so anyway, me and Jolian travel. We was in Manchester. We stay in uh, Birmingham sometimes. And we travel back to Manchester together where we was both living. And that tweet, I was actually in the car you were with him when Jolian sent that tweet no and the thing is about it he was actually telling the truth about the tweet how he described it was something ridiculous I think it was something like the car was totally accidentally no the picture of the car was totally accidental it happened whilst driving and my phone was in my pocket mm -hmm. so basically if you're reading that it's he sent it from his pocket and he didn't know the tweet went out but do you remember twitter back in the day so you remember the last picture in your your photos if you sort of would just go on Twitter and press a button, that picture would be on like, like you're about to send a tweet. It would be your first tweet. And how do you accidentally do that? As he's basically, it must have been, <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. It must have been ready to send and he's put it in his pocket and he's accidentally sent the tweet. So now I'm going to explain what the, the, the tweet was about. So Jolin mm. Lescott had a, a car company and he used to give us all basically cars for good prices, like lease deals. And in the picture was a, a, um, a car, it was a S63 coupe, all singing and dancing, top of the range. And it was offered them to, to the lads. And that's a picture that went out public to everything. So your sense was it was genuine. It, it was genuine. So yeah. you know what it's like after a football game, you know, when you've had a, a bad time, you're looking at the papers, who's writing what and who's <laughs> tweeting. And I seen Jolie Lescott tweet uh, like trending. And you're with him in the car. And I'm with him in the car, he's trending. But I'm like, all right, I was probably worse than Jolie today. Why is he getting all the flack from the game? I go on to Twitter <laughs> and I say to Jolien, you've just tweeted the car that you're supposed to send to the players group on Twitter after just <laughs> losing 6 <laughs> 0 to Liverpool. So then you've got all the Villa fans saying, oh, this is an absolute God. disgrace. <laughs> Look at him, he doesn't care about him. Oh, he, he's God. sending his, his flashy motor and he doesn't care about the club. 
So I said to Jolian, Jolian, just say someone's hacked your account, please. Yeah, the usual excuse. <laughs> yeah. just, just say, and he's getting calls left, right, and center. His mum's ringing in, his brother's ringing in. <laughs> yeah. and, and he's like, Jolian's like to me, no, I'm just going to tell the truth. But I'm saying, how are you going to tell the truth? He said, I'm just going to say, I accidentally sent it from <laughs> my pocket. So I said to Jolian, just think about what you're saying to me and how that's going to play out. And he goes, no, anyway, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. We get the club ringing us. <laughs> we get the manager ringing us. Oh dear. Everybody. We, back then as well, I think Stan Collymore was on Talk Sport and he used to abuse his left, right and centre. And you know, the legend Paul McGrath, he was lumping in as well. So he got all the Villa fans and whatnot. But the, the whole thing about it, it was actually being genuine. It was a genuine mistake. And I was in the car with him. And basically it was an, an accident. He didn't mean to do that at all. You should have been absolutely delighted because he took all the shit away from you because your <laughs> crap performance. But the thing is though, there's a side of me that was gutted but there's a side of me that was so happy. I <laughs> <laughs> oh was getting so much shit and I said to Jolie. I tell you what, Micah, I tell you what, for telling yeah, that truth, brilliant. that story and actually, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure Jolene will be pleased that, that about that story. I think he, the least he could do is not send you a picture of a car, but actually send you. <laughs> <laughs> He could send you a free car uh, for exonerating him completely. Exactly. Tell, yeah, but that's that's extraordinary. Though. Extraordinary, honestly. And, and you were the bloke that was with him. Who 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 would have known? What a <laughs> what a surprise, eh? Um, I'm, I'm not sure how we follow that. Um, I've got a question from Stephen Cross. Oh, oh, it's directed at me, obviously. Uh, if Everton didn't get banned from Europe, would you have still gone to Barcelona after your one season at the club? It's a really good question, Stephen. Um, it's hypothetical because they'd already banned when I joined Everton, um, which is unfortunate because I would have played in the, wasn't the Champions League then, of course, it was the European Cup because they'd won this league the previous season. Um, it, it, it was a contributory factor, but the biggest contributory factor was that... Money! No, not money on my <laughs> point. No, um, money for the club. <laughs> they accepted the fee. They came to me, the club. Everton said we've accepted a fee for Barcelona. And if they do that, yeah. you don't you know. feel entirely yeah. wanted. Yeah. Um, and so I, I don't know. Um, I still wasn't sure whether to go because I loved playing for Everton. It was a brilliant football club and a fantastic football team. And I'm convinced I would have won um, one or two league titles. Um, but as it was, and I also think if they hadn't been banned from Europe in English, for those younger um, listeners um, who perhaps don't know, um, English football were banned from Europe for a number of years because of what happened in Heysel, um, where there was a, a, a disaster there. Um, and so all English clubs uh, were banned. Um, so we couldn't play in the European Cup, which I think we'd have, I honestly think we'd have taken some beating. Such a good side. Yeah, it was a good side. But good question, Stephen. Uh, right. Um, Luke Hitchin, as strikers, would you hate to play in an era where wingers are inverted and constantly cutting back inside rather than whipping in crosses early? Ooh, God, it would, do, it would do my nut in, yes. honestly. It would, I mean, you don't mind if, they, if, you, if they're doing something different, but when it's constantly coming in and whipping it in. As long as they go both ways, even though yeah, they're exactly. a bit more inverted. Yeah. I mean, you look look at Manchester City. I mean, they, they play that way, but they get to the byline yeah. more than probably any other team I've ever seen. So you actually get more crosses with a team like Manchester City. But those wingers that you played with, we've talked about them before, haven't we? Yeah. They're quite infuriating when they check back yeah. and then you, you make your run and then they check back again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's so frustrating. Very frustrating. You'd have to have yes. a quiet, polite word, wouldn't you? Yes, indeed. <laughs> Right, next question comes from Alex Cooper. Hey guys, what is it like when England lose to Wales or Scotland? Whenever New Zealand lose to Australia in anything, it's like someone has died the day after. I do remember losing to Wales. I remember the Republic of Ireland was probably the worst one I had, was the opening game of the 88 Euros. Um, I think if you lose to kind of any neighbouring countries, it, it always feels worse. Yeah. Um, 
but it always feels good when you, you win one as well. Better when you win, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's horrible. So you'd agree with that? Definitely. How many England caps did you get, Micah? Only 13. Never played against Wales. Never played against Scotland. No? Didn't play in any home nations or even Ireland? No? No. Uh, played with them in um, the Olympics, but no. Did you play in the Olympics, Micah? I've never known that. <laughs> <laughs> Funny you should say that, uh, Micah, because Will Poyser asks, with the Olympics coming up, what was Micah's experience of playing at London in 2012 like? Also, if there was a Team GB football team this year, uh, who would you all pick as your starting eleven? Well, there isn't a Team GB in this one, is there? So um, we will save ourselves some thinking time. And instead, Micah, oh, your experiences of um, the London Olympics... And especially, I think, the Olympic Village. <laughs> <laughs> the rest is after hours. I don't think it's for a football podcast. <laughs> this. I, I, think, I think it is. It's, it's, a fo- it's a football tournament within the Olympics and you were part of it. Oh my tell us about God. the football side and then tell us about the extracurricular duties. No, so the football side was really good. I got to play with Ryan Giggs. Uh, I think it was me... Ryan Giggs and Craig Bellamy, who were the over 23s. Yeah. Stuart Pierce in charge. Stuart Pierce was the gaffer, was always going to take big meeks. He loved <laughs> me and I loved him. What a guy. <laughs> uh, the football side of things, we had a really good team. Um, Daniel Sturridge went. We were supposed to get Gareth Bale, but he didn't end up coming. We had Joe Allen, who played, was excellent um, back then as well. We had Neil Taylor, who was who was Welch, really in good form back then. He was at Swansea. Did they have to have a certain amount of players? Because obviously Team GB is different to most other countries where mm. it's like it's just France, isn't it? Or just Spain or just USA. You just pick the Whereas best Whereas ours, did, did they have to have a certain amount from each, like Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland and England? I, I don't think so. I think you had to pick a couple, but we had Ramsey as well, Aaron Ramsey. We had we had some really good uh, players. How far did you go in the tournament? Remind me, I was. We, we got knocked out to South Korea in the quarterfinals. Went mm. to penalties. Sturridge missed a penalty. Did he? Yeah. You'd have backed him. Backed him. I went off in the game injured. You were just you were just scared to take a penalty. Yeah. Oh, I would have <laughs> definitely not. Definitely wouldn't have taken a penalty. Not a chance. <laughs> But the Olympic Village, let me... Let I was going to say, sod the football, tell us more about the stories. <laughs> yeah. no, there, there were a lot of rumours about that it was a lot of fun and there was partying and there was with the athletes and all this stuff. Is that is that <laughs> real? Parties? It's a party of all parties. It's ridiculous. Just think about, you've got all the different athletes, all sorts of different specimen in there. <laughs> You've got the shot put to the javelin, to the swimmers, to the footballers, to the basketball players, to the... I don't know if volleyball was there. I don't know, but... Beach volleyball is an Oh, sport. my word. Absolutely everything was there. We had McDonald's in there. We had Chinese. There's a big, massive cafeteria with whatever you want. Everything is free. Once you've got your pass, you go in there. And it was like a, what I would imagine is to to go to university where you're sort of in halls and you're sharing like a room with, with, with someone. I think I was sharing with, with Daniel Sturridge. And, Did you do much damage, you two? Uh, oh, Off the record, obviously. Oh, 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 we won't oh, tell oh, a soul, oh, Mike. You, your <laughs> secret's <laughs> safe with us on, on um, the rest is football. <laughs> and I remember Kobe Bryant was there and there was all sorts of people taking pictures with him and whatnot. And we was all sort of standing around, like just exploring the village. And I went up to say, well, obviously, legend, is it possible? Can I have a photo? And he just says, no, not right now. <laughs> <And it's> taken- <laughs> I've never felt so silly in all my life. I was absolutely- Did he not know you Big Meeks? He, did, he didn't have a clue. He didn't have a clue who Big Meeks was. <laughs> and then we was there for about three nights. And we go training, we was training up. I can't even remember where we trained. We went out to train, come back into the village. And then three nights, we was up till like four o'clock in the morning. And it's how it works is you have like different campsite or campuses. So you'll have 
England in one block. Then you'll have Team GB. Bra- let's, yeah, let's Team, Team GB, GB in one through. block. And then you'll have Brazil, France, all these, all these countries. And there's a massive big room full of condoms. <laughs> I was just like, what? Obviously promoting safe, safe, whatever you want to call it. Safe you know, sex yeah. is the word. Can we allowed to say that on here? Promoting yeah, safe it's, sex. It's a, yeah, of course. Yeah. And honest <laughs> to God, I was on fire. <laughs> <laughs> you burnt down all the condoms. <laughs> what? I was on absolute fire. Honest to God, and back then, I was a little slimmer, I was a bit more ripped, I was a little bit more lean. <laughs> I was walking, it was summertime, wasn't it? Walking yeah, round yeah. with my Mike, with my I can ask you off. one question. Go on. Would that have been your only gold medal? Oh, there was, <laughs> hey, there was, a, there was multiple gold medals. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you got beat on penalties, you lot, you were absolutely knackered. <laughs> 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 one of the best times of my life honestly it was incredible uh, and I know it's all ton and cheap but it was amazing we're not beating that brilliant. story no, <laughs> brilliant. Um, got a question from uh, Christopher Brown from Sydney I hope it's not about the Sydney Olympics you weren't there were you as well Michael <laughs> uh, talk us through a typical day week for a Premier League player how much training do they cook their own meals at home or have nutritionists uh, managing diets Nights off, club sponsors and charity duties, etc. What is life like in the bubble? Good question. Mm. Micah, you can probably remember it best. A day in the life of a, a Premier League footballer, I'd say. I, you normally get up about eight o'clock. Um, I was living in Manchester at the time, a place called Hale, and it was only 15 minutes from the trading ground. So drive in. You do what you call pre-activation. So pre-activation is basically getting your muscles warm to go out and train. So that could be stretching. It could be some sort of physio massage or some drills to get your legs going before you go out. And we tend to only train for maximum one hour, 15. Come back in, get your massage, um, go through some tactics. So say if we play in Man United at the at the weekend and I knew I was up against Ronaldo, I would basically look Shit at yourself. His, <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. Look, look at what he wants to do from the left, because he could play right and left and side. See how many times he would fake in terms of before he put in a cross or would he dribble? Who, what would say someone like Patrice ever be doing on the overlap? Who I would be playing with on that side to sort of negate that? And who would push forward when we would drop off, when we would try and attack there? Because the good thing about playing against someone like Ronaldo, you know he's going to do all the great things going forward, but he would leave gaps defensively. So if if we could try counter uh, that in any way, and then go home and just literally sit at home and do absolutely nothing. I didn't cook. I cleaned and I you basically... Eat, you would eat at, eat at the training ground though for lunch, wouldn't you? Yeah, sometimes I would eat at training, but sometimes I would just go home and order Nando's, go straight to Nando's, get some chicken, have a little bit of sleep and then go go to the cinemas. That's what I would do. What about you guys? It's changed a lot, I think, since we'd basically turn up you go out, run around a bit, play a five-a-side, do a bit of shooting, have a shower, go home. And that's it. Yeah. We always uh, we always used to eat after training and the, uh, had lunch after training us. We all had to eat together and we couldn't leave until the manager had finished. And when Sir Bobby, you, you, <laughs> Bobby, oh. Sir Bobby was always, he was always late in. He took forever eating his dinner and we were all sat we, in the end, banging our knives and forks, like to, <laughs> to, <laughs> waiting for him to say we could, uh, we could, we could all go. So we always had lunch after training. He used to have some extraordinarily long yeah. team meetings, yeah. didn't he? <laughs> used to, we used to call him Mogadon sometimes because he'd go on a bit. Yeah. I mean, we all love Bobby. Absolutely. And I, I, I may have said this before um, in the past, but we were in the World Cup in 86 in, in, in Mexico. And we'd, you know, his team meetings were, let's say, very long, generally. And we'd 
we were about to play Poland in the third game. We had to win to have any chance of going through. And and he had the clipboard. He always had his clipboard up. And we thought, right, meet, team meeting like in the afternoon before we travel to the game. <clears throat> so he puts the clip, just doesn't bother with the clipboard. He just stands up. He said, boys, he said, I can go on. He said, I can give you all the permutations of possible results and this and that and the other. If they beat them, if they beat them, but we don't need that today because I trust you. You're going to do it. Just get out there. All we need to do is win this game and I know we'll win this game. And he, and he went, and that's it. And we thought, wow. And we're goosebumps up and we're all ready. And we're just about to jump out the chair. And he went, but if anyone's interested, here are those permutations. He turned the sheet <laughs> over and he spent the next 45 minutes going through every possible result. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Um, so, yeah, things have, have changed a little bit. It, it, it's funny because you talking about cooking there because Ray asks, it sounds like Gary hosts and cooks often for Alan and Micah. Uh, what culinary delight would they both prepare for me? Beans on toast. Chicken and rice. I like chicken and rice, beets, beets. Actually, I, I like both of those things. It's not too bad. Yeah, I, I'm not a great, I'm not a great cook. It, it sounds like, it sounds like that. Alan. Oh, I mean, you open a tin of beans and put, put bread in the toaster. I wish, uh, I, mean, I wish I could. I mean, you're 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 bloody brilliant at it, aren't you? Uh, you're a you're a you're a fine host. You are you with your wine and your food, and it's bloody lovely. I would actually, I would, uh, I would love to. Uh, to be as good as what you what you are at it. Did um did I tell you the story about Stephen Island when he invited us round to 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 cook for a couple of the lads? I don't think you have, Micah. So basically, <laughs> we, before I used to live in Hale, I used to live in a place called Grappenhall Hayes, which is Warrington side. So um, I moved there when I moved from Diggs. It was my first house. Absolutely loved it. Stephen Island was there first, so it was like a complex and we lived sort of, I don't know, 50 yards away from each other. And he invited a couple of lads over uh, f for dinner. So I'm thinking to myself, Stephen Island can't cook. There's no chance he can cook. So he said, no worry, I prepared it all. I've gone, we're gonna have chicken. We're gonna have chips. I'm gonna do a little bit of rice, some coleslaw. And some, uh, we'll do some corn and the cobs as well. And I'm thinking, fair play, he's making an effort for the lads. That sounds like Nando's that you said before. <laughs> this, this is so in, in, in my head, in my head, some, something is because so where we used to live in Grappin' All A's, Nando's was 10 minutes away in Stockton. Heath. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm going in there, and I, the things that he's listing, he sort of just. I'm thinking, well, he's not just gonna go get his Nando's, is he? So anyway, we go down and he sets the table, it's all fancy, beautiful preparation. It was prepped like yours, brilliantly. We sit down, he brings out a full chicken, loads of chips, <laughs> rice, and corn on the cob. So I'm just, oh, Steve, did you cook this? And he goes, yeah, um, <laughs> I, I've done it. I've been doing it for a while now. I've done it for a family. And, uh, <laughs> but I'm a chicken connoisseur. <laughs> I am a connoisseur when it comes to chicken. You could give me any chicken. I could tell you exactly where it's from. <laughs> what, the actual chicken? <laughs> the chicken. So any of the shops, if you go to KFC, I know oh, what it right. is. If yeah, you go okay. to um, Nando's, I know what it is. Yeah. Wh wh whatever chicken, if even like... <laughs> Places like Kansas or cot uh, Chicken Cottage, I know exactly what it is. <laughs> so I've took my first bite and I'm thinking, this is Nando's. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, 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 and I don't want to disrespect him, but I looked, I looked to my right and I think it was one of the players is sort of like smiling at me. And I'm thinking, are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> But well, we don't want to be disrespectful to him. So anyway, we do that. We, we, we finish up the food. We eat it. It was lovely. Did he, did he have the spices, the medium spice? Or the... <laughs> he had all the fucking spices as well. <laughs> He'd take them out of the packet. <laughs> They're taking them out of the packet. He's, the, cheek, the, the, the cheek of it as well. He took the chicken out of the oven like he just prepared. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> 
Oh, I, I did. I didn't have uh, the courage to ask you about it till about five years later. And I said, Stevie, come on, let's be honest now. D- did you cook that? He said, Did I fuck it? it was from <laughs> Dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Fantastic, <sighs> fantastic. You seem like a good lad, Steve. Yeah, he was a good yeah. lad. He really was, yeah. he was. Yeah. Really good, good player right. as well. Last question, and it's for Alan. And I, I, I was, this is a really interesting question because um, it's something I've always wondered as well. Question for Alan. During France 98, the England squad tried to get as many song titles in when speaking to the press. Whose idea was it? Which player in the squad won the competition and what was your favourite song title that someone managed to get in? Now, I remember the interview with you because <laughs> yeah. I was working for TV, BBC at the time, and we'd kind of cottoned on to this <laughs> and you were involved. Yeah. Right? Who, whose idea was it? It was my idea, yeah. It was just to try, <gasps> you know, just, just because you're away for that long, aren't you? It's like... Um, yeah. Uh-huh. We, we just thought, come on, we'll just see how see how long we can get away with it for. So what, as <laughs> as you know, when you're in the hotel um, yeah. in tournaments, you've got a media room where you do all the interviews. But next to the media room was the, actually the players' room. So you, so when you're in there and you're doing an interview, and obviously all the players and coaches knew that whenever anyone did an interview, you had to get a song title in. And of course, it's, you didn't. You didn't tell anyone. You just. You just sort of kept it to yourself. And of course, once you got the song title in, and, and people, re- you could hear the big cheer going up next door in the uh, in the players' room. So after a good result, I'm thinking, okay, how am I going to get this this uh, these song titles? And if you got one in, then you get. If you got another one in, then you get another big cheer and what have you. So it was a competition, not only to get one in, just to see how many. You can uh, you can get in. You got a load in in one, didn't you? So we had a good result, and the they the sort of said to us, uh, "What did you do last night?" And I said, "Well, it's a really important game. I mean, it's not as if we were out all night long like dancing on the ceiling." And I could hear the roar going up like <laughs> next next door. It was like, "Oh God!" It was such a laugh. Yeah, the, it was the things you do to amuse yourself. I know. Yeah, on yeah. Those, it was the big trips. cheer, you know, from the rest of the players. Yeah. You know, when you got the song in, you could hear the cheers <laughs> next door in the in the meeting room. Yeah. How many did you get in? in the most i think i I think i just did two i did that one uh uh did dancing on the ceiling all night long i think and uh i'm not sure i got more than two in at a time it's like that thing when friends ask you to get words in on on match of the day have you got mates that do that i've had all sorts of strange things (laughs) i I always i kind of always fall for it i remember and i got absolutely kind of pilloried on on social media once because I, I can't remember it. My friend asked me to say, you've got to get cappuccino in, right? So I thought, well, oh, Christ. So how do I get that in? So there's a part I'm doing, I'm writing the script and it's got to the bit where I do the trails for, for other programs. And it was, you know, that that thing where it's, oh, tomorrow afternoon you can see like Arsenal play on Manchester United. You can hear it on Radio 5 Live and, you know, and I, and I said something. And, and, and then before the football later on, you get a cup of tea or a cappuccino. And then I got hammered on to it. They said, oh, he calls it cappuccino. He's posh now, isn't he? <laughs> oh, he's posh. Why, why, why is it not just a fucking coffee? <laughs> Who's he think he is? Who's he think he is? Honestly, I got loads of abuse. I thought, I only did it for my mates. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I'm just reading. I'm reading Micah. I remember. I don't know. A couple of months ago, when um, we were doing match of the day, and Bradley Walsh is uh, is texting me saying, "You've got to get Micah when Brentford come on to say that their midfield was a hive of activity." It's like <laughs> the, <laughs> the bees. The bees. So yeah. So Micah's and he's, he's he sent me a video of himself absolutely pissed himself laughing when Micah said it in the. <laughs> A hive of activity, yeah. yeah. And then he, <laughs> and then he says, "Can you say a hive of activity?" And then I ask him if you say they stung Burnley. It's like, oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> Micah's getting it in. <laughs> Bradley Walsh's puns are worse than mine. Oh, I know. Yeah. He's, 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 he's a proper presenter and a comedian. Uh, he's brilliant. Brilliant, Bradley. We love Bradley. Um, well, that's it for our, our question answer episode. Thanks once again for sending all your uh, questions in. Uh, And your kind words are always appreciated. Thank you so much. Uh, That's it uh, for this episode. Uh, Goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. 